Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching this video in which I will answer to another question. Somebody asked me to discuss about the signature of the comparing method from the comparable class. And I'll try to explain this as simple as possible, but I want to warn you from the beginning that if you don't actually know a lot of things already from the Java fundamentals, you might not really understand my explanation. That's because the signature itself is quite complicated. So if you want to dissect it, you really need to know a lot of the fundamentals, especially the part of the generic types and of course extending interfaces, comparable and comparator. So all of these are already explained on the same channel. You can find uh, uh, several lessons uh, on the Java fundamentals stream about uh, these um, uh, fundamental things. Uh, if you don't know them already, I advise you go back and um, review or view the, those, um, those videos and then come back to the, this uh, explanation because again, uh, I won't retake uh, all of those things. I, I will just try to focus on the comparing uh, method uh, signature and explain it as, as uh, good as possible uh, in terms of um, you knowing already what generic, generic types are, inheritance and the comparable and com uh, comparator interfaces. So first of all, let's start with an example. Uh, you do use the comparing method of the comparable uh, class, which is a static method uh, to, space, to, to create an instance of a comparator uh, that you might use then in any kind of uh, sorting algorithm with any kind of method that needs a comparator for any, I don't know, any kind of algorithm that, that needs uh, the comparing operation between two uh, instances of a specific type of object. So you write something like, like uh, comparator comparing and this this comparing method which you see is a static method so first of all in the signature itself uh, you might want to observe that it's static which means that uh, you can call it without uh, needing um, an instance of the type of the class uh, actually its purpose is to create you an instance of comparator so that's why it's only an operation you call it and by means of the uh, attributes you might want to provide uh, this one is uh, optional uh, we will discuss for um, uh, making our example more simple only on, of the overloading of the function that has one parameter parameter here. Uh, but the idea is that the purpose of this function is basically to return you a comparator object that you can use then to compare your objects. So again, you see a lot of things here that needs to be discussed. And that's, that's the purpose for, um, uh, for uh, today's uh, video. So what can I uh, do here is basically say, I'd like to create a comparator to compare two objects that I create. And for that uh, reason, I will uh, define um, a class cat, let's say, and assume that this is the object I'd like to compare. So uh, I have a name for my cat and this is the attribute based on which I do the comparison. If, if that's the case, then what, what I'll do is say, I'd like to obtain back a comparator for a cat. Let's call C, let's call it C. This, this is the comparator, or maybe, maybe it's even better if you actually call it comparator, just to, to see it better. And then you have a function and this function, which is defined by the functional interface um, a function from the Java util function package. Sorry for the repetition, but that, that's how they are called. Uh, it um, simply uh, represents an operation that receives an input and uh, returns an output. That's why the function interface uh, has two generic types. One of them, the first one is the input and the second one is the return type. So in my case, C, which is the cat that I compare is the input. And then on the right side of the Lambda expression, I will have the attribute based on which the comparing method will create the comparator. So in my case, I can say it's name. So if I write it like this, what I get back is simply a comparator that will compare cats and it will compare them by the means of the name. So it will basically, if, if will you imagine you uh, say um, use them for a sorting algorithm and you want to sort your cats ascending, using this comparator will sort your cats ascending by their name. So uh, that, that will be alphabetically. So uh, the one starting with A will be the first and then the, the one uh, uh, whose name is starting with B will be the second 
and so on and so forth up to Z. So uh, that's what that's how you use it. I wanted first to show you how you use it because that's the first uh, step into understanding its signature. Now, if you um, look into its definition, you'll see that this function actually has a quite complex signature. And I think your question was related to actually the signature of the method. Uh, why does it need to have so many generic types uh, here? Uh, what uh, what what are their meaning? Uh, in the return type as well as in the parameter and again to understand well this you actually need to have some basic knowledge so you you need to know what comparable is and you need to know what comparator is you see here it refers to comparator as well which i remind you is that interface that an object implements to specify a, com a comparing rule with another object uh, and uh, the comparator that you define here relies on objects that are already comparable. So that, that's why you basically uh, see here that comparable is referred as well as the comparator. So uh, let's start it from the beginning now. First of all, you have two generic types. One of them is called T and the other one is called U. Let's start with T, which is pretty simple. T defines the the object the type of the object that you compare so in my case t is the one that replaces cat here you see in the definition that t here is this is this is the declaration of the generic type and then you see that the generic type t is used as being the object the generic type object of the comparator returned by the method so in my case is indeed cat here so it's the object that you want to compare you obtain a, com a comparator for that object uh, and uh, you see that is also referred this this t is also referred from the parameter from the first type of the function so again remember what the function is the function is basically uh, um, you know, an operation uh, with an input only one input that returns an output. So you, you need to, to have a value, only one value as a parameter before the lambda expression. And of course you need to return a value in the end. And this is in terms of function, this, this is the input and this is the, return, this is the return type. In my case, as you can see, the input here is a cat. So this C here is actually the same as the one you see here. So that's why T, which rep represents the object that I compare, you see T is the object that I compare, compare, which is cat, is also the one that you see as being the type of the first parameter of the function. And the first parameter of the function is precisely what you see in front of the lambda expression. So if I would extract this here, if I would extract this parameter into a separate one for you to see it better, I, I'll have to, uh, to say function of cat and string and this is my function f and then this one would go as a parameter here so that that's for you to see it better so that that's um, in this this way you see uh, very uh, easy that c here is a cat actually and the constraint added by the generic type make sure here that the same object that you use t as being the object of the compare of the comparator you return is also the one received by the function here so your function cannot receive something else than precisely the object for which at the end you'd like to have the comparator because the purpose of this function in the end is to tell the comparator which is the or, or which are the attributes of uh, the uh, object that in the end will be used for the comparing operation so that's normal that the first the first parameter here needs to precisely be of the type of the uh, object returned by the comparator and then of course some of you have already observed that this is actually not precisely the type i wanted first of all to to enforce that actually the purpose is that the first object here of the function is basically the type of the object you return but as you can see in the definition of the method 
while in the comparator, of course, you do need to have a spe specific type, which will be T, which will be, of course, cat. In the first um, generic type of the parameter, you don't have precisely the type, so you don't have T, but you have the wildcard definition, which is question mark super of T. And the reason for that is because you might have a cat, but you might also refer here by using any of the above classes of cat. Why is that? Because using any of the above classes, you will still be able to refer to uh, the characteristics that your object has only that by using of course a more generic or a more a more general uh, shape of the object you will be able to refer at most to less characteristics because you know when you refer from an object you can refer to only from what that type is that you uh, use and to be again to be uh, more specific with that, let's actually change our example and assume the cat extends something. Of course, the cat already extends something, is the object class, but I want it to make, to make it more visible. And uh, let's, let's put away the object class and let's create our own class to be extended so that our example is um, easier to understand. Uh, and uh, for that, of course, I will create a new class. I call it animal. And I assume that any animal has a color just to have some attribute to which it's uh, easy to refer. And then I will say that, of course, the cat extends animal. So it's clear now that uh, you uh, have an object is extending a class, extending another class. So my cat is inheriting the color from here and it has also the name. So what actually happens is that by using here as for the parameter for the function that you provide as a parameter to this uh, to this comparing method uh, the wildcard question mark super of t it means that the function allows you to use either the type itself which is in practice most mostly what happens but uh, the function also offers you the possibility to uh, use uh, any of the um, only uh, any of the extended types on uh, basically any of the extended uh, ex extended classes just because by using them you don't affect anyhow the logic itself so say i'd like here instead of using cat i'd like to use animal i will be able to do that i can do that the only problem is that, of course, I will not be able anymore to refer to name because from the C being now of type animal, I can only refer to what the animal has. That means what the animal defines and what animal inherits. But I cannot refer anymore, even though my instance may be of type cat, I cannot refer to the characteristics of cat. So, for example, yeah, I would still be able to refer here to the color, which is fine, but that doesn't affect anyhow the logic, because if I would have had cat, I would still be able to refer to the color, because from cat, I can refer to more, not to less. So, you can use the object itself, and that's in practice what happens, but at the same time, you can refer it, you can refer to the object by using any of the more general types, because by that, you don't affect anyhow the logic. You will, however, restrict yourself by the means of the first rule of polymorphism in Java to refer to only the characteristics of, um, of that type. You know, again, I want to uh, remind you that this refers to precisely the polymorphism in Java, which say that if you have a cat C1 cat, of course, from C1 you, to you, you can refer to both the name and to the color. So C1 color. But I can, of course, refer to the cat by making use of one, any of the above classes or in the inheritance chain, so any of the classes that are inherited by cat, in my case animal or object, which is the superclass of any other class. But when I do so, you see here my IntelliJ 
uh, already is showing me on line 10 that I have a compilation problem and that can, that that, uh, uh, that problem uh, is um, because I cannot refer to the name as long as uh, I keep my reference of cat inside a um, class uh, uh, um, variable of type animal uh, because the animal only has the color so it doesn't have even though the instance itself didn't change it's still a cat I can anytime put it back into a variable of type cat and refer to the name but as long as I keep its reference in the variable of type animal I cannot refer to the name I can only refer to the color and that's basically what happens here again you can go back and see my uh, more detailed explanation on this in the previous lessons of the Java Fundamentals uh, stream uh, that you can find on this channel. But uh, I hope that you understood and I, I've tried to, to, uh, to tell it in uh, different ways uh, for you to understand that basically you can use the same object here but by using uh, any of the above types of, uh, of that object, uh, any of the inherited um, uh, types you still can do that and it doesn't affect you it only restricts you but in in terms of the logic of the function you can do that so that's why the developers of this uh, comparing method uh, added this wildcard here to allow you if you'd like to refer to here the object here by using any of its super types uh, and uh, not necessarily precisely the same type if you'd like to do that and you see in my example you see that this is possible because yes I can uh, replace cat with animal now my C here is an animal but I can still use the function um, this way because animal is a super type of the cat and by doing so I restricted myself to only use the color I cannot refer to the name anymore but that's my problem it's my decision to do that if I'd like to so, so this is the complete explanation of the first parameter. So that, that's the T here. The T is the type of the object that you compare. That's why is the one forwarded here to the returned uh, comparator. So it's if you want to uh, create a comparator of cat, T will be cat. And this way, uh, T uh, here will be the same one. So the, the constraint that's added through the generic type is that here the, the return type is the same one or any of its super types that you can use to refer to it in order to specify which is the uh, way in which your final comparator will compare the objects so t again this is it is the object that you compare in the end and the object for which you obtain the comparator uh, now, of course, you have a second. Uh, you have a second type, uh, generic type U, that's declared by the method. You see that that part here between the static and the return type. I hope you do remember. It's the declaration of the generic types. This is the way. This is the syntax you in which you can do it in Java for a static method that uses generic types for constraints. The way this one um, does. Uh, you uh, can declare your generic types as many as, as you'd like between the um, symbols of less than and greater than um, just in front of uh, the um, uh, return type but of course after any of the um, modifiers of the method so that's why it's public static and then you have the generic types and you see we have two this one that we have just explained and you have a comma and this huge uh, part here is basically only one generic type uh, and this generic type uh, refers to the um, second the the right side of the uh, lambda expression here so it refers to in my case what i have written uh, at the right side of the lambda expression what i return from the lambda expression so basically to the returned uh, object return type object of the function that you use with the comparing and that is in the logic of the comparator the value used by this comparator to compare your object so the value that you'd like this comparator to use to compare your cats in this case so if i read if i've written here c dot color that means that my cats now are compared by Java by comparing the values of the colors so that's that's uh, the right side and now let's take a look because that's quite complex again first of all 
let's take a look only on the constraint itself of the u without uh, taking into, co into consideration the other part the generic types itself i want you to look only at this side it says that u needs to be something that is comparable so the the reason for why um, this constraint is added is because if you remember and i hope you do remember otherwise i um, again advise you to go back and review the um, video on which i describe in more details the comparable interface the comparable interface is the interface one object extends uh, to define its natural comparing order type uh, so uh, u in other words needs to be something that can be compared Otherwise, it makes no sense to be the return value here because that's what theoretically our comparator will use to compare your objects. So it must be something comparable. It cannot be something that's not comparable. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. You cannot use an object that's not comparable to compare something. So the first constraint that's added here, u extends comparable, is just to make sure that whenever you return something, you return a value that implements comparable and specifies a natural order a natural uh, rule of uh, of ordering for that uh, uh, kind of instance uh, and in my case i do return color which is a string uh, string is comparable it's a class that if you if you take a look inside it you will see that it extends comparable but if i for example would have created my own class of some kind say i do create a static class for and as you can see this is not comparable in my case i have left it without implementing the comparable interface and say i have any any animal has fur then i cannot actually use fur here same as i do with color because if i try to it will tell me that fur is not comparable so you cannot simply return any kind of value here it might must be a value that can be used to compare the objects if I return something that's not comparable, then I cannot make it uh, um, uh, be the, the return value from this function because it cannot be used further for comparison. So by this constraint here, which is u extends comparable, uh, the developers of this comparing method uh, try to make sure that they do receive only objects that make sense that can be then further used to compare. And then it's again here something that says question mark which is the wildcard question mark super u let's take a look first only at u and then refer to the question mark and super u is the object itself so you remember might you might remember that when you do implement the comparable you can implement the comparable theoretically and specify any generic type so same case of fur i can implement comparable here and I can specify I'd like to compare the fur with any kind of object. So I, I can simply do something like compare fur with animal. I don't discuss now if it does or not make sense. In real world scenarios, you'd probably never find something like this, but it's possible syntactically. Syntactically, you can implement comparable with any generic type. And that in theory, that it means that you, when you override the compare to method, what's inside here is the definition of the comparing rule between this, which is the fur, which is the type of the class always, no, this is inside the fur class, which means that this is of type fur. And you compare it with O, which is an animal. So this, this is, you compare fur with an animal, which is not something logic, of course, but you can do that. So in, in case of Java, this is possible. Syntactically, you can, you actually can see here, I can do, com I, I can compare two different kinds of objects, even though maybe in a, in a, a, a real world scenario, it wouldn't make sense. So what, what the developers of this, uh, this function try to make sure when they used here the U and they said is not any kind of comparable. It, it extends comparable, but it must be a comparable um, implementation that explains how to compare the object with the same kind. So to eliminate all the possibilities in which somebody would use something else here, they do refer only at the situation 
which is the most, of course, logical situation in which this is the, um, the comparing rule of an object with one of the same kind. So they want, they want to make sure that it's basically one of the same kind. That's why it, it has to add this EU here. And then again, why is the question mark super? So why, why do we need to add also the wildcard? For the same reason we discussed it here at T, because if you really want to refer it from a type that is more general, it doesn't, it doesn't represent a problem. You can refer to an object from a more general type, just that you constrain yourself to referring only to the characteristics uh, that are provided by that class. So you, you cannot use all the characteristics uh, of the instance in this case because that's how polymorphism work in, uh, works in, in Java. So that, that's again because uh, the developers of, the, of this method try to uh, allow you do anything that's logic. Of course, they want to add you some constraints. You have here, you need to have an object that is comparable and it, it's not any kind of comparable. It's a comparable defining a rule between that object and one of the same kind. But if you'd like to refer at that same kind using an upper shape, then it's your problem. You can do that because it, it doesn't affect us anyhow. You anyway inherit all those that are um, uh, given by by uh, their um, um, upper types that that are inherited by by this type, so that's that's the explanation of uh, this part of U here. So that's why it's U extends comparable, and that's why it's a comparable of question mark super of U. And now uh, is of course the last thing that we uh, we uh, uh, remain with is the second parameter here. Uh, of um, uh, the function, which is you need to return, however, either an object of type U or in this case, when you return, you need to return an instance that's e either, either of type U, either one of the types inheriting you because extends, if you remember, in terms of inheritance in Java, and not only, but yeah, we refer to Java here. Uh, extends uh, can also be referred to as an is a relationship. Is a means that you can return an object itself or any other objects that is uh, below it in the inheritance chain. We say that is a something of above. So in my case here, if I um, uh, say uh, return fur here, Okay, that cannot be string anymore. Okay, so I do I do re uh, return my object now, and it's possible to do that because it respects here the uh, uh, rule. Then I can actually return this object, or I can return anything that extends from far uh, that that extends uh, this this class because uh, between any other class, I have no idea what example to give you, but I will say an X because. I, I don't have uh, my, my imagination, it, it's lacking at the moment. But say you have a class X that extends fur, then you know you can refer to this saying that X is a fur, which means that you can use that instead of the object fur. So in my case here, if I'd like to say uh, that I want to return an instance of type X, this works as well because X is a class extending from fur. And you can do that because, yeah, by the means again of polymorphism, you can use uh, any of the instances that are created with classes that extend from uh, the above class. And that's, that's basically the full definition of the signature of this method and I know it's not easy and I, I've tried my best to explain it and I I do rely on some of the things that you need to know again so uh, uh, to understand it well you again need to know about generic types and the wild cards of generic types and you need to know what inheritance is and how it works and you need to know about polymorphism and how it works uh, and you still need to know also about comparable and comparator. So you, you need to know all this in order to understand this type um, before. Uh, if you 
um, don't know any of this maybe I've referred to comparable but you don't know what comparable is uh, or I've referred to inheritance and inheritance chain and inheritance tree but you don't know what, what those are uh, or I've referred to wildcards and you don't know again what these are uh, remember that there are uh, some of the videos uh, already uh, on this channel that explain in detail with examples all these notions and once you've completed them and you understand these uh, uh, things, then you can come back to this video and uh, review it to understand better the entire signature of this method. Uh, in To conclude with, uh, with my explanation, the whole idea of adding all these generic types is to add you all the needed constraints, but only the needed constraints uh, to, uh, what, to, to the way uh, on which you can call this method to make sure that uh, the return type corresponds well with the, the function that you provide as a parameter. And this way, uh, of course, if, uh, if that was not uh, restricted from, uh, from the signature side, then it would uh, uh, have meant that the developers of the function needed to take care uh, of this inside, uh, inside the function. So in order to make sure that um, they uh, they will receive as parameter here only what's compatible with the return type they have added this very complex signature and uh, you can see here this is a very good example uh, as an addition to the generic types lesson i have on this same channel where you can see something more complicated in terms of using generic types uh, and in this case uh, the way in which the generic types and the constraints and the wildcards have been used to make sure that the values correspond correctly of the parameter of the return uh, and the return time are logic are, are co coherent one to each other and they correspond correctly uh, to what the method itself does. Uh, I hope I was clear enough, uh, even though again, this was a difficult topic and uh, I, um, I uh, started with uh, considering you have a lot of prerequisites for it, but uh, I hope that uh, at least I have clarified it um, a little bit more and um, you've at least understood the most of it, if not all of it, of course. Thank you very much for your question and have a great time for study further.